Hi bakers, welcome back. So we've got our cookies made and we've made all of our different colored icings and all the consistencies that we need. The thing about royal icing, um, it's time consuming. It takes quite a while to pipe and to create the designs. And then the most time consuming part is letting it dry overnight, which is super essential. If you don't let your icing dry overnight and you try to put down, say, the base layer and then add colors on top of it, if that base layer is not completely dry, then you're going to end up damaging the top, the surface, or the sides. Um, it, it needs to dry completely also to make sure that it's color fast. If it's not completely dry, the colors will bleed into each other, um, especially if you have a light color and a dark color next to each other, um, and it's just not very attractive. So um, that that letting them set overnight for me is the hardest part but it is super super essential if you absolutely cannot let them set overnight i, I recommend a minimum of four to six hours um, do your the first layer of icing let dry for four to six hours and then continue on if you have to or if you need to do it that quickly um, so we're going to get on the first design element um, where i'm going to do the royal icing transfers. Now I have a bunch of different cookies that I've done this with. I love doing this technique because like I said earlier, this gives me the ability to cheat <laughs> because I'm tracing the design and I'm not having to freehand all of this detail. So what you're gonna wanna do, if you need to be in a place where you're kind of mobile, um, you could tape this onto the back of a baking sheet and that way you can move it around. Um, quite a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and tape it right here on my countertop. And I do recommend taping it down. Now I am going to do the deer, but make sure that you tape down your parchment paper. You can use wax paper for this as well. Tape it down so that it stays put. Okay, so I've got my dark brown royal icing. And just so you can see, I'm using a very, I don't know how much you can see of that. I'm using a very fine tip. This is the Wilton number one. Um, it, so it's basically the smallest one that I can get. And now I'm just going to trace the design. And this is where we kind of want to try to stay within the lines. Um, if you don't completely fill the lines, that's perfectly fine. So there I've got the body, and here I will do the horns. They don't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to use our scribe tool to help shape this here in just one second. Okay. And now you'll take your scribe tool. You can see I have a little opening there. I'm just gonna make small circles and maybe pull that icing in whichever way I need it to go. There we go. Now you don't have to stick directly exactly on what this design is. You can make your own little designs here if you'd like. Just pull a little bit of the icing out. Occasionally clean off your tip Pull this up, pull some of this out this way. Now just do whatever suits your fancy on these guys. So we will let these dry overnight. If you try to take them off earlier, it just won't work. So give these a long time to dry. The benefit of these is that you can do you can do them way in advance. Once you've decorated these, or once you've made these decorations, you can keep them for months in a container, in some kind of an airtight bag or container. So if you have extra icing after a project or something like that, go ahead and make them and then just store them. <laughs> I 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our pumpkin cookie. Um, we are, I don't know about you guys, but I'm in love with white pumpkins, so I've decided to flood this pumpkin with white icing. But what I wanna do is I want to have those sections that stand out and stay defined on the cookie. Now, if you want to, if you need some guidelines, you can actually um, draw them on using a scribe tool or a toothpick, just like this. Or you can use an edible food color marker if you'd like. And these are just the lines that I'm gonna use to give me an estimate of where to put my icing. We're only going to do sections of the pumpkin that are not touching each other until the first sections have had a chance to dry. I got my white flood consistency icing with, this is the Wilton number five tip. You can use a smaller tip if you'd like. This is just the one that I put on here. So we're going to start and draw a line on the outside, right where we put that, right where we put those marks, and then fill in the inside. Now this is flood consistency icing, so it's going to fall into place here on its own a little, but I'm gonna help it out just by doing small circles with my scribe tool or toothpick. And you don't have to follow those lines that you drew exactly because you're gonna cover those up with more icing later. Just keep doing this to kind of smooth out the icing. If you do see any bubbles, you can go ahead and pop those now. If your icing is slightly too thick, um, you may be having a hard time getting it to spread like this. You might want to put it back in the bowl, add a little bit of extra water. You can also try just to get the icing to settle. You can shake it a little bit like that. Um, but if you have about a 15 to 20 second icing, you shouldn't really need to because it'll settle all on its own. So I've done that middle section. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the two outside sections so that they're not touching this one. Steady my bag with my opposite hand. And when you are squeezing your piping bag, I'll show you, when you squeeze down, the harder you squeeze, the thicker your icing comes out. If you just squeeze a little, it will come out thinner and more slowly. So you choose what's comfortable for you. On the outsides, I tend to go less pressure. And then once I get to the insides, I squeeze a little harder to get it to come out thicker. Okay, so once we've got our cookie to this stage, we're just gonna leave it alone. We're gonna let it dry for about 20 minutes while we go ahead and pipe the rest of our pumpkin cookies. Okay, now our pumpkin cookies have been sitting to dry for about 20 minutes, so they should be ready to go ahead and fill in these other spaces. Okay, and now you can see that we have a pumpkin with ridges in it. You can clearly see the definition in between the sections. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll pipe on um, a little bit of a stem. And then tomorrow, after this dries completely, 100% dry overnight, we'll add some detail on top to make it really pretty. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back and take my brown Royal icing, um, we've used this before, the same color on our deer, our reindeer. Um, and I'm going to add a little stem onto our pumpkin. Thank you. 
and there we have it. There's our pumpkin with a stem on it. So we're gonna finish all of our pumpkins and then let that sit and dry overnight with the rest of our cookies. Okay, now we're gonna start on our next design and this is going to use a wet on wet technique. I chose this design specifically to show you a wet on wet technique and then also um, a wet on dry technique. So we're gonna do some trees on here, but what we're gonna start with is kind of a dark grayish, grayish blue um, that we're gonna use for the sky. Um, make sure that your piping bag is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flood this cookie. Now again, a lot of people would go in and outline with a piping consistency icing in this same color all the way around. Um, you can absolutely do that if you want to make sure that your flood stays inside, but I like to save time and just use my 15 to 20 second consistency. Now when I pipe this, I don't go too close to the edge because I'm going to use my scribe tool to help me out with that. And I will say that, again, standing up makes this a little bit more difficult. I highly recommend if you can sit down, <laughs> it, it makes it a little easier. So now I can apply more pressure to squeeze that icing out a little faster. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna fill it in. So do your whole cookie. And then grab your scribe tool and just fill in those spots and adjust your edges. This is where you can pull these corners and points down and make them really pretty. You can get a nice scroll design going here. And you can see that this icing, even though I didn't do the technique of outlining, I'm still, my icing is not flooding off because I've kept it between 15 and 20 seconds when I diluted the icing with water. If you do that, you can save time. So I will go all the way around the cookie here Filling in those little gaps. Doing this little circle motion really kind of helps pull that icing in the direction you want it to go. And you could take this all the way to the edges if you wanted to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my white flood consistency icing, and this is where we get the wet on wet. So this icing is wet. This blue icing is wet, and I am going to add, with my white flood consistency icing, a moon. And I'm just going to pipe on a circle right up here. Now that is going to slowly kind of sink right into my blue. I might have to tease it just a little bit. It's going to become, because they're both wet, they're going to become one even layer. The next thing I'm going to do, just take that same flood consistency icing and put a few little dots. These are going to become stars. You want to make them very small. They can also be different sizes, some larger, some smaller as many as you'd like. And now we're gonna go back in with our scribe tool and we're gonna turn those into stars. So just take a very clean tip scribe tool 
and pull out. And you've made a little star. And do that with each one of your dots. Clean off the piping tip if you get any blue, because you don't really want that in the center. And I recommend that you kind of vary the direction that you do the little pulls in. Okay, so now I've got my stars and my moon. I'm just gonna give it a little shake to kind of settle the stars, but you can see how we've already got a nice little beginning to our design. We're gonna add some 3D trees here in the front, but we're gonna let this dry completely overnight. Okay, and that is day one of our cookie decorating with royal icing. We're gonna let all of those cookies and the royal icing transfers dry completely overnight, and I will see you back here tomorrow to do more decorating. To keep your piping bags ready, so that they're nice and soft for tomorrow. Just take a wet paper towel. I like to just put all of them together. They may drip or leak out just a little bit. Totally fine. Wrap those around with your wet kitchen towel. And then you can put any kind of plastic over them. So. Just set this aside, does not need to be refrigerated overnight. It can be out for a day or two um, and still be ready to use tomorrow with the piping tips and all. So I will see you tomorrow ready to finish off our cookies. Okay, so we're gonna move on with our cookies with the royal icing transfers. Here are my transfers that I made and you can see that I haven't, just by moving the paper, they've, they've come off. They're looking good, they're staying intact. So I'm gonna take my base cookie whatever shape you chose to use for that. And I'm gonna flood it with white icing. I'm not gonna to go too close to the edges because I'm gonna use my scribe tool again to move that icing around um, and to make sure we don't have any rough spots. And again, this is our white flood consistency. You might have chosen a different color which is absolutely fine. I'm not gonna to go too close to the edges because I do wanna leave, leave room for a border, but that again is a personal choice, however you've decided to do your cookie. I'm just gonna make sure that I echo the shape of the cookie. Okay, so now I've got that flooded. It doesn't look like I have any bubbles or anything that I need to pop. So I'm just gonna take one of my royal icing transfers. If they are stuck down, you can use a small spatula um, or any, any kind of tool that you need to lift them up. But you can see that even the fine little tips of the, ink, of the antlers did okay. As long as you make sure everything is touching, it should dry just fine. Now some people have different ways of laying this down. I'm just going to take the end of my scribe tool and I'm going to kind of decide where I want to place it. Once you place this down, it's a little bit difficult to move it. So kind of know where you want it and then drop it down. Now I can use my scribe tool to move it a little while this is still wet and without having any icing on the top, I'm just gonna push this into the icing just a little bit. I don't want the antlers to be sticking up too much. If they don't lay flat, I'm okay with that. I like a little 3D effect. But it's completely adhered, and now we're gonna let this cookie dry. It's gonna to need to dry for at least an hour, so go on with the rest of your cookie designs. Go ahead and lay down the rest of your your royal icing, royal icing adhesives, whatever you want to, whatever you want to put down, and then come back to do the border after this is completely dry. 
Okay, now we're going to finish off our deer cookies um, with a border. Now, this icing has, the flood icing has only been drying for about two hours, so it's still a little bit wet. Um, you can go ahead and do the border if you're really careful. You make sure that you don't push on the icing when you do the border. Um, to be super safe, you could wait overnight, uh, but I am going to go ahead and do the border now. And just like we've done with our other designs, we're going to practice on our parchment paper. With this border, what I would like to do, I'm using a Wilton number one here. And we're going to do kind of a border. I'm using the blue. We're going to do a ball basically and then pull down. And then in the other direction, a ball and pull down. And we're going to continue to do that all the way around the outside of the cookie. So just keep your, your cookie turning and your arms ready to move. And you're going to do pressure to make a ball and then pull down and let go. Pressure to make a ball, pull down and let go. Okay, our cookies have dried overnight, and these are the ones that we're going to have the trees on the front. So what we're going to do to finish this design is we're going to add a few trees. Now you can use whatever color scheme you want. I'm going to go ahead and use the brown because trees are brown. If you used a dark gray on here for the trees, that would be fine too because that kind of makes them look like they're in shadow. Um, and essentially, to lay down your lines um, for anything, anytime you're laying down any kind of a line um, with royal icing, you are going to not drag your tip across the, the cookie and you're also not going to lift up too much. So you're going to you're going to make sure first of all that you have your icing is coming out of your piping bag and everything's okay and then you're going to squeeze a dot to start and then pull up with your piping tip just slightly above and then touch down to stop it. You can practice this as much as you want. You really don't want to get that that bulb when you start. So to start smooth, there we go. So don't squeeze too much at the beginning. Lift up just slightly, set it down. Squeeze, whoops. And when that happens, you can always go back in and lay your line down again. So just lay it down and then pull it back. Um, if you push too hard, you end up with blobs. Now see, if I try to drag on the surface, it ends up being a wiggly line. This is a lot of pressure I'm trying to drag on the surface and it wiggles. So just lightly squeeze and touch and touch down. Lightly squeeze, touch it down. So even if your hands do move back and forth, which you can see mine are, you can still get a straight line. So what is that going to look like on our cookie? So I'm going to use the brown, like I said, and I'm going to do three cookies. Now the beauty of this is that trees are not perfect. They are not completely straight. But I'm going to lay down, this is basically the center of my tree, the center trunk. You can make that slightly thicker if you want to by laying down two, two trunks side by side or on top of each other. And just start adding branches wherever you think branches would be.
Now I'm going to let those two dry while I move on to the rest to my other cookies with the same design because when I come back I want to add a third tree right here in the center but I want it to appear to be raised and closer to me so in order to do that these these need to be dried a little bit so I'm just going to give them about 20 minutes while I do the rest of my cookies and then I'll come back and add the third tree on that cookie okay we're going to go in and pipe our third tree now that these are they're not obviously hard but they are dried to the point that this icing won't run into them I'm just going to put a third tree here and then I'm going to set that aside and let it dry Okay, let's go ahead and add a little bit of snow to our trees. Now I've got some white flood consistency icing and then I've also got some sparkling sugar. This is the Wilton brand. Um, you can use anything here. If you have sprinkles that you'd prefer to use that are different from this, um, I like these because they're a little bit glittery. Um, now we did let the trees dry because anything that's wet when I put this sparkling sugar on the um, sugar is going to stick to. So let your trees dry completely um, and then get your white flood consistency icing. And I'm just going to go into areas where I think snow would gather on top of these trees, generally kind of on top of the branches. And just lay down a little bit of icing. And this is one reason that your trees definitely do not need to be perfect because you're kind of going to cover some of them up and make them look very pretty with some snow. Okay, so now we're going to do our pumpkins. Um, you could use these pumpkins exactly the way they are. I think they're really pretty. You could add some greenery, do whatever you like to kind of pep them up or just serve them as is. But I'm going to show you a technique called brush embroidery. I'm going to use my light orange and I've got a number three Wilton. So this is a slightly larger tip than we were using before, but it's still a pretty small tip. And I'm just going to do a practice on the parchment so you can see just going to draw kind of roughly the shape of a leaf. I'll leave the bottom part open. Then I'm going to take a paper towel that's just a little bit damp. Wipe off a paintbrush. I have paint, you'll have paintbrushes that should be only used for food. And just bring in the icing. You don't have to be an artist to do this. That's the fun of it. Just pull it a little bit. You're going to leave a border on the outside, but you're just pulling a little icing in to give you some really pretty texture. And on these leaves especially, I will leave the center white. And if you get a little too much icing on your brush, you can just wipe it off. You can also use the brush to kind of reshape if you don't like the shape of your leaf. So let's go ahead and put that on our pumpkin and see how that looks. I'm going to do two leaves right up here at the top. I'm going to start with one. Draw my point. Back up. Make sure that brush is just a little bit damp. And then start pulling in. Start pulling in a little bit of the icing. And 
And there you go. And that is a really simple way to add a little bit of color and a little bit of texture. I'm going to wipe this down because I'm not crazy about the way that looked. See, that damp brush just really helps to move the icing around. It gives you just a little bit of time. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do leaves and the rest of my cookies. Okay, now I'm just going to go in and finish up our pumpkin cookie and I'm going to use blue and brown. I've decided I'm going to do kind of a polka dot pattern and I'm going to start with larger dots like that, a little bit more pressure, and then as my tendril gets longer, I'm going to use smaller dots and then make a curl and it just kind of comes out, it looks like it kind of just trails off. Or some of those in brown and some of those in blue um, because I really like that color combination. And generally I try to do about three of the main color and then just see where I want the other colors from there. So I'm going to start here in the middle with the biggest dot. Pressure and then release. Pressure and then release. And I am completely freehanding this. Dots are getting smaller as I go. I'm actually not sure where I'm going to go with these. I'm just doing it. I'm going to do one up here. Bigger dot. You can do some of them longer and some of them shorter. They can have some can have more curls. It's really important to make sure that you have smaller dots there in the middle so that they don't kind of merge together. You don't want them to touch. I think I'm going to have one coming out from up here. And let's get smaller as it goes. Start to curl around. So now I'm going to go in with some blue. And I'm just going to add a few of the same types of tendrils. I'm going to use less blue. Um, I'll probably start right here, but I'm going to do a little bit smaller, smaller tendril and smaller dots. Well, bakers, that is the end of our Royal Icing Bake Along. Thank you so much for joining us. I really hope that you um, found it helpful and also had some fun with it. Um, we covered several different techniques that will hopefully help you to learn and explore and play with Royal Icing and then move on into other techniques. Um, we did cover the wet on wet, the wet on dry. Um, we did some brush embroidery. We did some Royal Icing transfers. We did a little bit of a lot of different techniques. There are a million more to play with though. So post pictures of your cookies in the comments below or in the group. We have a post set aside in the GBBO fan group. Um, so we want to see pictures and we'd love to see questions. Ask questions anytime. Even if it's not during the bake along, I'm more than happy to answer questions on cookies or royal icing or any other kind of bake. Just like everybody else in the group, there's always so much to learn and so much to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us in the Bake Along and thank you to Caro and Christine for everything you guys do for our group. It's the only place that I go on Facebook now because it's always positive, it's always constructive, and it's always just a little bit of fun. So thank you guys for running such a great group. Um, make sure that you drop your comments below if you have any or questions and also in the group and show us pictures of your cookies. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.